I am so glad that we get to talk to uh, Kelly Stewart, honey, the actress who plays Nell. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> we are here with the one, the only Kelly Stewart, the fabulous actor who played Nell in Love by the 10th Date. Welcome, Kelly. We are so excited to be talking to you about this wonderful motion picture. Hi. Kelly, you looking good, girl. Yeah, you, you look looking so good in Quar Girl. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being with us. We loved this movie. Yes. First of all, yes. it was so fun. It felt really nice to like get to watch friends out in the world. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Because we haven't been able to do that in so long. No. I yeah. know. And no, it also inspired me to try to work on my roots, handle my scandal, okay, in the head region. I needed that. I, I needed that push, you. honey. So that was oh, beautiful. Good, good. <laughs> um, but we also like Nell, you play Nell, Gabby's bestie, and you're like our favorite character like from oh. the jump. And also just felt like you are you had... The juiciest storyline, you know what I mean? Like, it was kind of the most, like, we were like, this is progressive. And, like, this is, like, yeah. happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's what I felt when I read it. I was like, oh, okay. So we're jumping the fence and coming back over, you know? And I really thought that it was so brave of Nzinga and the whole team and Lifetime to kind of really introduce something that a lot of people go through, but we don't really see. Mm -hmm. We don't really mm -hmm. um, discuss. And I felt like I really wanted to jump into that. I love the whole thing. Now, what is your dating philosophy? You know, obviously this movie is all about how the 10th date is magic. This is when everything <laughs> changes. Do you have a dating philosophy? Are there rules you live by? Go to therapy. That's my first dating philosophy. <laughs> yes, sis. Yes. Okay. Get your okay, yes, ass accurate. in check. That's my first dating yes. philosophy. Yes. And then, yes. you know, yes. I do date. I have a wonderful time um, dating and meeting different people. And I think that the older I get and the more experienced I get, the more I know to trust my first mind and trust my gut because I think mm -hmm. that sometimes mm -hmm. we know from the onset whether something is meant for us or not. And when it's not, sometimes we want it so bad because we're lonely, we're yes. bored, we want yes. distraction. And so we choose the experience anyway. And then yes. you fast forward three years and the mm -hmm. reason it didn't mm -hmm. work out is because of the thing that you knew very yes. early yeah. on. Yes. So now in my dating life, I trust my first mind and I take the pressure mm -hmm. off of myself to need to know the answer why my gut is saying what it's saying. We, we're so lucky as women to have that gut instinct. Men don't have, like, <laughs> I remember, I remember like watching an Oprah episode with my mom when I was like 14 and it was, she was just like, listen to that. And I was like, Oh, okay. That's great advice. But it's, we are like biologically set up to know when something is good or bad. And men are just, oh, well, I, I, mean, <laughs> I have no idea. I will agree with you a little bit, but I don't know if that's all the way true, except a little bit more in this generation. And the reason I say that is my dad knew right away. My parents have been married 53 years. And he asked my mom oh my out on Aww. their first date in college. She said no. She lied, said she had something else <laughs> to do. And so he asked another girl out and went to pick that girl up in the dorm. And that happened to be my mom's dorm. And so she was like in the rec room, curling her hair, hanging out with friends. So she had <laughs> lied to my father. And he walked by her <laughs> and he said, oh, I thought you had a date. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to fix you. I'm going to marry you. And he said that to her the <gasps> very first day what? that he asked her out on a date. But that also feels very generational to yeah. me. Like, there's something about, like, 60 years ago when a man was like, honey, I got to yeah. get my job at the factory, get my life together, buy a house, have two kids by three. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, because they were, like, raised to have, you know, the, the family qualities and wanting to get married. Yes. And, you know, we don't necessarily have that now. We, the structure of dating has changed. People text you yeah. now. Like, if a man texts mm -hmm. me, too long i'm like mm -hmm. i'm not doing that i'm all the way grown no, yes, exactly, if you can't exactly. call me i have a problem yeah. i mean my father i remember he took my mom out when they finally went out on a date and um 
He picked her up and took her, <laughs> this is fine, took her out on a date and then they wound <laughs> up at a party. And my mom, being the feisty woman that she is, she <laughs> found her friends and really didn't like my dad too much and just kind of dissed him. <laughs> she dissed him and left the party <laughs> with her friends. And so, wow. okay. I, exactly, wow. like rude. And mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so my father's looking for her and she's gone. Everyone says, well, Anne is gone. Anne is gone. And you know what my father did? <laughs> and he was still like in college age. He went to her house, knocked on the door to make sure she got home okay. Uh, and oh my gosh. I know, right? My mom's dad answered the door and he said, she's not here. And he said, you brought her out of this house, so you better bring her back in. Oh. So my father had to go around town. And this was before cell phones. Exactly. Before you could drop a pin, you know, and go around town and find my mother. Because he brought her out of the house. He had to bring her back home. And he found her. And oh he brought her back home. Oh, my God. And that's the courtship that I come from. Now, that doesn't mean I necessarily yes. uh-huh. need somebody to be going around town because yeah. I ain't my mama. I ain't leaving you if you take me out on a date. But I will say, I will say that I think there's something about um, courtship that we, that we miss out on mm-hmm. that we've, we've lost. lost. I think yes. there's something about yes. the butterflies in the stomach that, that happen yes. when somebody brings you flowers or when you put a little extra effort mm-hmm. in. And so I've always been like, you know what? I can do that too as a woman. If I like a guy and we've been on the phone a while and he takes me out and he said he likes chocolate chip cookies, I might just put a couple of chocolate chip cookies in my purse and bake a little thing and wrap it up. You know, do something cute. (laughs) Because what you put out in the universe is what's going to come back to you, you know? (sighs) Okay, wow. So I need to get the number of your therapist first, okay? What I took away from this is I need that number. We're in the same game, but we gotta, we're got we our own player. We just got to play it differently. We can't fall yes. into the trappings of everybody else because <laughs> like attracts like. So however you want to be treated, put that out in the world. It's going to come back eventually and the right person will show up. I believe that. Naomi and I are both married. We just, <laughs> we love the advice you're giving. Right. And I'm like, now I want to, now I, I guess I need to be nice <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Can help him more. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, thank you so much for talking to us. You are the best. Thank you guys for having me. So nice meeting you. Thank you. Okay, Megan, that was it. Oh. That was. 